one of the questions was on what was the biochar percentage to manure volume? The time? Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't remember exactly the percentage for this study, but uh, we usually just do quarter inch thickness on top of the manure surface or put like half inch thickness on, manu on the manure surface. So uh, compared to the manure value, it will be very low, a uh, very low percentage. Because actually if the, we, we do want the biochar to float on top of manure, you, you will have better results. If there are too much of the biochar, you actually need the, it will cause the biochar to sink, which means the, the result will be not very good. That's all right. You added peroxidase and other amendments to the manure at the beginning, or just once at the beginning of the study. Yes. Do, you, do you need to reapply that, or how long will that last? Uh, since the study was, yeah, I, I don't remember these things, but since the study, I think it lasts about 137 days. But uh, we only added the soybean peroxide once at the beginning with different thickness, of course, yeah. And it was, and it was still effective then? Yes, I think it's, by it's gradually decreasing, but uh, it, it's, it, it is still effect, effective, yeah. Another question from Augustine. As another management strategy, Strategy. Do you know if the bedding material on the feedlot surface would have an impact on the greenhouse gas emissions? So, um, actually, I've done a, a, a quite a bit of work looking at bedding materials that can be used in. I haven't used them on on feedlot surface, but or or, or outdoor feedlot surface. But we've done um, work as it would be in a like a bedded pack facility, um, like a confinement barn, like a, a deep bedded barn. And uh, yes, bedding material makes a huge difference in greenhouse gas emissions. Um, some of the, the wood-based materials have, have lower emissions and uh, really uh, a lot of the crop-based materials, if you want to interchange weed straw, corn stover, um, soybean stover, they're all kind of similar to each other. Um, but yes, bedding material absolutely does make a, a big difference. And I, I, I think some of that can maybe be translated into how it would work on a an open lot feedlot surface if it was used as a bedding material. Okay, and then Mindy, I think this would be for you. Are there currently any regulations on the use of ionophores or home hormones in beef cattle? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there's, there are guidelines on how, um, you know, how the, you just follow the manufacturer's labels, it, it follows FDA recommendations of, of when you implant them. Um, but again, the, um, as long as you're following the manufacturer's uh, directions, then the, the ear is discarded at, at slaughter, and so there, there shouldn't be uh, risks to, to food safety. Does that answer the question? Is that kind of what you're... Hopefully. <laughs> okay. I mean, I, I think that's... Um, yeah, I think I, I, have a, I have a question it's from Trevor. The addition, uh, the addition of the manure, it is as strictly straight from the top of the the manure storage simulator to simulating the real farm situation. So it is from the top. In your in your simulators that you use, you add the the manure from the top, so it's similar to what you happens in a in a slime yes. barn. Is that what you're saying? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, and then this one's from Mindy. Are there, do you know of any impacts on humans from the anabolic steroids? No, I do not. I suppose that, um, again, you know, no, I don't. I'll just say that. But I, I, I would say again that, you know, there are, there's only like one nanogram, which is one part per billion more estrogen in implanted beef versus non implanted, and you are getting you know, 400 or 45,000 times more if you're eating white bread. But I don't Wonderful. know. Thank you. And then one last question. 
um, are there, do you have any thoughts about the use of vegetative buffers to help reduce the migration of manure odor, odors? Either of you or? I have no idea. <laughs> I know um, it's not my area of specialty. I know that vegetative buffers um, are, are used um, either planted like a, a tree line around, um, you know, a, a livestock facility or um, also can be used as um, like, like runoff can be put onto them and nutrients absorbed. I don't know, um, I don't know off the top of my head if there have been studies that look at greenhouse gases in those situations or not. Be interesting thing to look at if it hasn't been done, absolutely. Yeah, it would be. We commonly okay. use that because it's a, it's a nice looking, um, aesthetically it looks nice as a treatment. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And sometimes out of sight is out of mind. So, <laughs> yeah, but I mean, I it, they, they do reduce dust and odors, but I, I don't know as far as greenhouse gases. I'll stop interrupting now, Rhonda, and you can finish. <laughs> yeah, wonderful. Thank you so much, Mindy and Baton, for your informative presentation. Um, that will conclude the webinar.